Today I'm here to talk about uh, pressure control fundamentals, and this is brought to you by our friends at Stromquist and Company and Control Trends. So let's talk about low pressure control fundamentals. What is the function of a low pressure control? It is to make or break an electric circuit, which in turn controls a contactor, turning the compressor on or off. The low pressure control will make or break the circuit on either a rise or fall in pressure. The low pressure control, actuated by refrigerant suction pressure, is used for low pressure cutout control, pump down control, and capacity control. Low suction pressure can lead to compressor motor overheating and or inadequate lubrication. So our low pressure control is protecting our compressor. Let's take a look at the refrigeration system and see what exactly the low pressure control is doing. So first and foremost, the low pressure control, which you can see on the left side of the compressor, is connected to this suction port. First and foremost, it is protecting the compressor. As the refrigerant uh, comes back to the compressor, it's important that we have enough refrigerant to come and cool the motor, the stator of the compressor. The refrigerant also carries with it oil. So if we don't have enough velocity to bring that oil back to the compressor, we won't have lubrication. So that's job one. We're also using the low pressure control to turn on and off the compressor. As you can see, the temperature control is connected to the liquid line solenoid valve. When the temperature rises in your space, the temperature control will bring the, uh, make the contact and energize the solenoid valve, allowing refrigerant to enter into the evaporator. The pressure will rise on the suction side of the system. When the low pressure control senses the pressure going up, it'll allow the compressor to come back on. As the compressor pumps and we bring our system, uh, our temperature in the space down, once it's satisfied, the, low, or the temperature control will uh, de-energize the solenoid valve. Once this happens, the compressor continues to pump and will uh, pull the refrigerant from the suction side of the system, the high side of the system, I'm sorry, the low side of the system, and push it over to the high side of the, the refrigeration system. Once the pressure hits a certain point, the compressor, the low pressure control will turn the compressor off. What we've done there is we've pushed the refrigerant over to the condenser and the receiver. This is also called pump down. So we did two things with the low pressure control there. We turned on and off the compressor and we pushed all the refrigerant over to the condenser and the receiver so that we know that we won't have any liquid waiting for the compressor when it starts up and we won't try to start the compressor under load conditions. So let's look at the type of low pressure con controls that we have. First we have the encapsulated electromechanical and the electronic pressure controls. The encapsulated pressure control is compact in size, tamper proof, factory calibrated pressure settings. What that means is when you buy it, it has a certain cut in and cut out setting. It's non-adjustable. It has an, the optional, optional trip-free manual reset. So what that means is that it, uh, if you have the manual reset, it has to reach a certain pressure before the uh, encapsulated switch will allow the compressor to come back on. You can hit a reset button to turn the compressor back on. We also have a version with optional heavy-duty contacts. Those heavy-duty contacts would be for larger compressor or larger amperage systems. The pros of the encapsulated control are the costs, the size, and there's a minimal chance of refrigerant leak. The cons, they're non-adjustable, and they're not as, a, as durable as the electromechanical and the electronic controls. Applications you will find the encapsulated switch in are residential HVAC, fractional horsepower systems, and as a redundant backup on DDC controls. As we move on to the electromechanical control, this is by far the most popular 
uh, and there's a huge installed base out there. You will find that these controls have a high amp contact rating to meet commercial application requirements, dependable precision snap acting contacts for reliable, durable switch action. What this means is when the contact closes, a spring holds it closed. This prevents arcing between the two contacts and chattering. We also have a trip-free manual reset on this design, and Johnson Controls has a microset version. It's with the differential, it allows you to get tighter control in low pressure applications. The pros of this control are that the, it is adjustable, it's very durable, and we have a wide selection. The cons on the P70, which is at the picture on the right hand side at the top, it has a capillary directly on the control. If you don't support the capillary properly through vibration, you can crack the capillary and have refrigerant loss. That's why we developed the one below at the P170, which you would use with the armor capillary. The other uh, con of this type of control is it can get out of calibration through excess vibration coming off of the compressor or if it's bounced around in the back of a service truck over time, it can get out of calibration. Applications you will find these controls in are commercial refrigeration and commercial HVAC. When we look at the electromechanical control design, on the upper left hand side we have our differential screw. On the right hand side we have the pressure screw. And then we have the pressure scale. The differential screw is what you're setting uh, the low event, uh, the low pressure event and the pressure screw is the high pressure event. So in a low pressure control, when you want the compressor to come back on, your uh, pressure screw would tell you what pressure that it was going to come on at. And the differential screw would tell you the pressure that the control was cutting out at. As you go to the bottom of the control, we have the bellows, and then we have a capillary with a quarter inch female fitting. On the opposite side, we have the P170 version with the uh, beefed up bellows and a quarter inch male flare connection that she would use with the armored capillary. The armored capillary is capillary with a rubber membrane over top of it and then brass armor. So uh, it's a beefier fitting to resist uh, vibration and also if it's rubbing up against anything the brass armor will protect the copper, keep you from rubbing a leak into it. As we move on to the electronic control, the main features with this control is that you eliminate the capillary tube. You have a transducer, so you have no potential for uh, refrigerant leak on the capillary. It comes in 120, 240, or 24 volts. We have a time delay for anti-short cycle, a lockable front touchpad, continuous pressure readout so you don't even have to put your gauges on, and remote sensing up to 100 feet. The pros, it's adjustable. You can use it for low uh, pressure, high pressure, any application. Uh, it's very durable, multi-purpose, as I mentioned before, and uh, no refrigerant leaks. You will find this in commercial refrigeration and commercial HVAC applications. So why should a service tech use the Johnson Controls uh, pen refrigeration pressure controls? First, all of our pen products offer a three-year warranty. Our controls have high amp contact ratings. They're designed for commercial and industrial applications. We have the precision snap acting contacts for a reliable, durable switch action, trip-free manual reset option, and we have the most extensive uh, pressure control product to offer to meet any application requirements. Baked enamel, cold rolled steel enclosure uh, is on the electromechanical, so it's a very durable design. Uh, which is great for when it's in transit uh, and in commercial and industrial duty applications. Thank you for your time. For additional information on Johnson Controls products, you can call 800-ASK-JOHNSON, which is 800-275-5676. You can also go on www.johnsoncontrols.com slash quicklit for additional information. Hey, this is Mark Ramick at Stromquist Company at the counter. Hope you enjoyed the training video uh, with Johnson Controls. Just a few tips when your customers come in like that we have uh, to order the pressure controls. P always equals 
pressure with Johnson Controls. If they come in with just the cover, they do have the part number in here. And uh, on the parts themselves, they will always have a date code if there is ever a uh, warranty issue that you need to address. Just for instance, this is 14 for the year and the 31st week of this, uh, of this year. Um, you can buy these with the capillaries or you can also buy, buy the P145 that is without the capillary and you can order a capillary separate. It does have the same thing. The part number is on the cover, but in addition to that, you will also find the part number and some information on the top of the bracket. Also a date code up there, as well as this one will let you know it's 45 seconds, six and a half PSI. Uh, these are just some of the things to keep in mind with your customers when you are uh, trying to serve them. Now, if they come in and they don't have a part number uh, or the cover, um, ask them to, if they could at least take a picture of the part so that you could help them identify it. And if they can also give you some pressure ranges and timing that you're looking for, as well as the length of the capillary. So if they do get the uh, part without the capillary, you can give them the appropriate one.